I want to talk more specifically about stress. And that's where I want to sort of relate this because this podcast isn't just for doctors and medical professionals. It's also for sort of everyday people who are interested in self-development and something more broadly that I believe that you would be an expert in is stress management as well because the emergency department is such a stressful area and like you know the situations you're in are so stressful uh, what are some techniques you employ in real time to decrease your stress levels in say life-threatening situations like for example i remember me and yourself were in a resus situation and for everyone listening resus medicine is like the most acute medicine think of people who are having cardiac arrests and that's exactly what this patient had and i just remember you were very calm during that whole situation and you're very straightforward and you sort of direct everyone to their role And I think that's something I really look up to in emergency staff specialists and especially yourself is how calm they can be in a really stressful situation. So how do you think you make yourself more calm in those scenarios? To be honest, I'm not calm inside. (laughs) But you don't know. But I think the thing is that you don't look stressed at all. You look very calm and collected. And I think that bleeds into everyone else in the room. And so then we can because we look to our leader. We look to our leader and say, how should we act? And if the leader's calm, then we're all calm as well. Leading the research scenario is a skill. Mm. It's an essential skill as an emergency physician. Mm. We've been trained into that. Emergency medicine training is the longest training in uh, any specialty, seven years in total. Really? Yep. So you have uh, two years of basic training, right? minimum 12 months of professional training, and uh, four years of advanced training. So that's mm. the longest advanced training. Mm. So it's, it's, it is essential because these skills, you can't learn that from textbooks. What you're exactly doing right now is what you have to do. You need to look up to someone who's doing it rightly and then learn from that and put yourself uh, into that too mm-hmm. and invent your own way of doing it. Mm-hmm. It could be meditation. It could be breathing exercises. It could be something like that. But to get yourself calm into resource because it's a messy area. Emergency medicine resuscitation room is highly uncontrolled situation and you need to bring that under control. Mm-hmm. To do that, you need to have that particular mindset to bring all your entire team into. And that is not something that you're born with, that you have to earn that skill. So my strategy, I process things in my head, but I do not show that out. It's probably I learned or practiced and uh, achieved. You're not the only person telling me that one. So in many instances, people say that, how did you manage that situation like that? Nobody knows what's going on in my head. (laughs) So um, I can't say it's a kind of uh, meditation just before that. Yeah. However, when I walk into resuscitation room, I go into kind of trance, semi-conscious. I wipe everything out of my head. And before that, I delegate my duties to someone else because as a team uh, leader in the emergency department, mm. you have many other jobs to do. So once you walk into emergency situation, you can't keep all these uh, responsibilities on your head. You have only one focus. So it's like you were given a bow and arrow and they show you a parrot on the branch of Mm. the tree. Your instructor asks you what you can see. I only see a spot just above the parrot's eye. I don't see the beautiful trees around there. I don't see the sun (laughs) setting at the background. Nope. I see only one spot Mm. just above the eye. Mm. So that focus is essential inside the resource room Mm. to keep everything together. And it's very stressful, but if you keep your outside calm, we will not bleed that stress into others. That's the most important thing. Yes. You always have the time after recess to went. Yeah. Maybe five minutes until the next recess come into room. <laughs> Maybe half an hour. Mm. So you use that space to went out. Sometimes I have to go home and went out. If you ask my wife how many times I go home and tell the story to her, and sometimes I cried at home, but I do not uh, let that come out during the recess because if I let that out, the entire team will collapse. Yeah. Because uh, being a team leader in the research is, is, is hard. And it's, it's, um, everyone is looking up to you. And you need to be that, that clear. There shouldn't be any doubt 
in there. If you have that mindset, train yourself to that, you'll be a good team leader in Rissa's room. The only time maybe I felt a flicker of that trance-like state that you're describing, it was in Rissa's and it was another sort of cardiac arrest. And I remember feeling, I think it was one of my first cardiac arrests actually, and I remember seeing the patient and the patient was the same age as like my father and then came in and for some reason for like a few seconds i just sort of went out of it and started thinking oh what if my dad has something like this what am i going to do and then i was like what am i doing i need to like there's a patient on well here so i switched back and then just turned that off and then just did my job and i think that's what i can relate to in terms of what you're saying maybe that's the same feeling as this exactly. trance of just switching off and just doing your job no matter what your sort of mind is telling you about but it was very hard um, so I, I'm, sh- I'm sure you know, it's going to take a lot of practice to get much much better like your level is the more you do it more you get better at it yeah, yeah. It's, it's hard at the beginning mm. and uh, emergency medicine you encounter these things every day mm. and it's always your brother your sister your parent your kid mm. it is the case it's been particular when it comes to kids it's very uh traumatic experience to everyone those who have kids or younger brothers sisters because mm-hmm. you always related to your own loved ones and it's it's they not every um, person inside the resource room the same mm-hmm. some have strong uh, minds some don't that's human nature and you have to manage that human resource well as well some situations um, a couple of your staff start crying or, or falling apart inside the resource room you have to take them out for the best interest of the patient but you had to look after that staff member as well as mm. part of your job yeah it happens often quite often